All right, welcome back to the Corporate Finance Academy. Today we are going to go through EBITDA versus net income versus operating profit. There's all these different words for earnings and income and profit. So let's talk through them and figure out what's different, what's the same, and what they all mean. Today we're going to talk about EBIT, EBITDA, net income, op profit, op margin, operating income, net income. We're going to cover it all and try to talk about what they are. We're going to go through specifics on EBIT and EBITDA and why we use them and what the differences are to find net income. And then we're going to give you a master calculations sheet, which will give you all these profitability terms and how they're calculated. And we'll give you a little summary and how you decide which one you want to use. Diving right in, You've, there's a list of names here, gross margin, net margin, operating profit, operating income, operating margin, EBIT, EBITDA, net income. You hear all these different terms. Some of them mean exactly the same thing. Some of them are different. Today, we're going to try to help you understand what means what. Ultimately, these are all income statement metrics. So we have the three financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow statement. But these numbers are all from the income statement. So the profitability measurement problem. So there's too many words that often have similar meanings. Again, the same list, too many words. So let's start with EBIT and EBITDA. You can see here, earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization. So the first four, earnings before interest and taxes, that's EBIT. And then when you add depreciation and amortization onto that definition, so earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, amortization, that's EBITDA. So let's get into it a little. Earnings is nothing more than net income or your profit. Before is really just indicating that we are trying to look at those earnings, that net income, before everything is listed, everything list, before everything listed below this line. So interest that has to do with financing charges this is the kind of the capital structure that's used to fund the company it ignore this ignoring interest helps you focus just on your operations and then we've got taxes so again ignoring this allows easier comparisons across companies uh, different countries have different tax rates uh, companies have different tax breaks or incentives or carry forward losses that they're using. So when you have taxes and you're comparing a profitability metric, it's hard to compare across companies. Depreciation and amortization, this is really around the investment the company has made. And when you're looking at depreciation, um, while a company may have made smart or bad investments in capital equipment or something along those lines, when you're looking at depreciation amortization, you may be not looking at the real company's current performance. So it has a little more uh, tilt towards past decisions where these investments were made versus the operations and how they're performing today. Okay, so now you get to the income statement and how you get to EBITDA and EBIT. So as you look down, you're gonna start with revenue and cost of goods sold which gives you your gross margin right here. Uh, then what you're going to do is take SG&A and R&D expense. And once you subtract out those two, you're left with EBITDA. And then you step down once more and take out depreciation and amortization, and that gets you EBIT. And if you don't, sometimes this may not specifically be called out on the income statement but you can usually get it from the cash flow statement if you need to. So why do we use EBIT and EBITDA? It's a good approximation for a company's real recurring core cash flows from the operations. So it ignores interest and taxes in both cases. When you have interest in taxes, um, the way a company's funded, the capital structure of it, as well as uh, taxes, different countries, different tax breaks. It just becomes hard to compare companies, but it also becomes hard to even look how a company's really doing because you have some of these other things happening. So, so your net income can become a less valuable way to look at the real performance of the company. So 
as I mentioned above, you, you also are able to use EBIT and EBITDA to look at an apples to apples basis or versus an industry average of a company because you're taking out some of these other variables which can make it so that companies aren't comparable. So when you look at net income, it's tougher to really compare companies. Um, EBIT and EBITDA is not always on the income statement, but you can often calculate it easily. And it's pretty common in manufacturing and industrial businesses or other companies that are uh, capital intensive because you strip that out and you can focus a little bit more on the operations of a company. So the difference between EBIT and EBITDA is really depreciation and amortization. Um, so some companies have a large amount of depreciation and amortization charges. And this is due to, it could be recent, but also sometimes large past investments that they've made. Um, these costs then are somewhat fixed. So they're going to be there no matter what the revenue of the company is this year or how well they've controlled costs to get sold. You're going to see those fixed costs. But EBITDA will actually exclude depreciation and amortization and focus on the real core operations. Okay, so thinking about the income statement a little bit and why you might use some of these different profitability metrics. So if you start with the revenue here, this is a company and it shows from 2020, from 2019 to 2020, revenue actually dropped. So revenue's down 21%. So if you jumped right to net income, you would say, wow, this company has a real problem, down 60% year over year. But that doesn't really tell you the whole story. So if you look at this business, you can see from a gross margin standpoint, you're only down 16%, even though your revenue was down 21%. So you did something you either had favorable mix or you did something right from a cost perspective as a company that your gross margin is actually not dropping as fast as your revenue. Here you also see SG&A and R&D expense held flat, which causes your, because your revenue is down a little bit, it's gonna show that your EBITDA is down 23% here. Um, and if you look at your EBIT, you've got an even bigger drop, similar to the income, is down about 60%. So when you look at these two numbers, net income or EBIT, you would say, look, business has a real problem, but when you, it, but, but it's not entirely clear what's going on. You would probably assume that they have some sort of cost problem, but really what's dragging them down is the fact that they have these costs which aren't scaling with revenue. SG&A R&D expense, depreciation and amortization, the cost profile of the business has actually improved a little bit, or perhaps it's mixed, but get the idea where some of these numbers don't tell you the whole story, but as you walk through the income statement, there's different things that each of these profitability metrics tell you as you walk down the income statement. So Want to define net income here? We just saw on the last slide, but it's your profit after your taxes, after your interest, so that considers all your capital structure requirements, and it's after your other income, which is sometimes a little bit non core. But what we really wanted to do was to give this master sheet to help you think through all these different terms and how you can decipher them. So, first up, you've got gross margin or gross profit. So, this is a simple one it's revenue minus cost of goods sold. You'll hear it as expressed as either of those. Um, that's a, a pretty simple one. And then you move on to operating income. So you hear this called operating income, operating profit, operating margin. Many times it's abbreviated or so people just say op margin or op profit. Um, it's also the same as EBIT. And it's really just gross margin minus your operating expenses. Uh, to, to capture it a little more Fully, it's revenue minus cost of goods sold minus your operating expenses. <clears throat> then EBITDA, which often is not on the income statement, but it's really just your operating income or your EBIT plus depreciation. And as we mentioned earlier, you can get this from the cash flow statement. Um, a more 
a backwards way of getting it to it would be you could take net income plus your taxes, plus your interest, plus your depreciation and amortization. And then finally, you've got net income, which is your operating income or your EBIT minus interest minus taxes. Or as you can see here, it's just working your way all the way down the income statement. So this might be something good to even print out, put on your desk, um, keep with you. It's a good, useful little tool. So a few differences between these metrics. So you're thinking about whether you want to understand the core operations or you want to stand, understand the full business, the full profitability. And you may care about different things at different times. You're also thinking about operating expense versus capital expense in the investment decision. EBITDA adds back depreciation and amortization, so you're kind of ignoring that, and you're focusing more on what OPEX impact is on the business. EBIT and net income are going to give you a more overall picture, including the investment. And then you've got interest, taxes, non-core. Net income has interest and taxes in the calculation, but ignores some of those non-core operations, discontinued ops. Um, so there's there can be many differences here. I mentioned before, taxes, especially with different countries, different tax rates, tax incentives, carry forward tax losses, it can throw things off, especially when comparing company to company. And the other thing to remember is there's no best metric here. They are all they all tell slightly different stories. There's different variations, and often comparing numbers like we did earlier on the income statement can help you get a feel for what's going on in the business when you look at the year-over-year -year variances and how they differ between these profit metrics. So that's it. Hopefully this helps a bit. Feel free to ask questions. We'd love it for you to subscribe, click the like button, um, leave any questions or comments you might have, and we'll be back with more videos soon.